Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 21 of Get Real with Rajiv. I just want to say a quick thank you to those of you who've been with me through this journey of the 21 episodes, who've been asking me questions, have been commenting on these videos, have been sharing these videos. A heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you because your response, your engagement is what keeps me going and do this week after week. So with that, let's get into the four questions for episode number 21 and today we again have Avinash who's going to be the voice of your questions. So Avinash, what's the first question that we have this week? First question is from Chirag Zaveri on Instagram. I wanted to ask about what modus operandi has a long term and sustainable process. An ethically government and principally driven mindset or a pure and classic format of money minting mindset. How do we weigh a value based or ethically driven system with a way solely monetary gain approach? Well, so Chira, you asked me the classic question of ethics versus economics. Now, a pure economic mindset or a money minting mindset like you worded it in your question is definitely not healthy in today's era. Today be it your team members or your customers want to associate with people who carry values who carry the value of giving so if you have only this mindset of i want more you have only greed and selfishness that is driving you then that will drive away your team members and your customers from you so clearly a pure economic money minting mindset does not work in today's world On the other hand you ask me whether a pure ethical value based system or value based mindset works well let me tell you something that i have noticed working with so many entrepreneurs there are some entrepreneurs who cover up their incapability and lack of flexibility with values and ethics in reality what they are not is they are not competitive they are not going out there and wanting to make things happen they are taking it slow they are in their comfort zone and they say i am not money minded for me values and ethics is more important so if that is you then wake up my friend because that's not ethical and being values oriented that's just being lazy or incompetent you have to be competitive in today's world so having said that here's what i believe in i believe in conscious capitalism which means you have to be capitalistic you have to be focusing on creating more gaining more winning more yes you have to be capitalistic but you have to be consciously capitalistic which means there has to be a sense of consciousness are you doing things that are legal moral and ethically right because if you are able to do things that are legal moral and ethically right then you will sleep with a smile every night are you taking care of the interests of your team members are you taking care of the interests of your customer are you taking care of the interests of your society of your community of mother earth if you are able to do that and still go out there and grow your business then you have two thumbs up from me my friend so conscious capitalism is what i stand for not really this pure jhola wala mindset of i it's not about the money neither the mindset of it's only about the money i believe it's about meaning with money and if people are able to blend meaning with money then there's a lot of money to be made and there's a lot of meaning and value to be added to this universe so it's a fine balance my friend it's not this or that it is this and that coming together and creating this hybrid of conscious capitalism i hope that clarifies a lot of things for you chirag and i hope that allows you to come out of your comfort zone challenge yourself because sometimes people who ask me such questions it tells me that they believe in this values ethics mindset and they kind of cover that up and be in their comfort zone so i want you to challenge yourself and look at money as a medium not as an end and look at money as a critical means so have a great relationship with money don't have this mindset of i hate money money is the root of all evil that doesn't serve anybody at the same time make sure that money comes when you add massive value that is a great balance between the two so that's my response to you chirag with that let's go to the second question the next question is from pawan chabaria on youtube a uh, hi rajiv a lot of people including me are thought oriented in real life for example i think about lot of things but when it comes to doing i'm unable to take any action on what i had thought can you please suggest how can a person convert themselves from a thought oriented to action oriented in life <laughs> i love the way you worded uh, this pawan you've called yourself thought oriented and not action oriented another word for this could be laziness okay or another word for this could be fear of failure so i want you to really ask yourself pawan what stops you from taking action is it procrastination where you keep deferring things or delaying things for the future 
or is it the fear of what if it does not work because according to me these are possibly the two most common reasons why people don't take action it's either what if it does not work which is fear of failure or i'll do it later not right now which is procrastination and laziness now the deeper root cause to both procrastination and fear of laziness is lack of clarity sometimes we don't take action because we don't know what action to take or we don't know how to take that action so ask yourself what are those thoughts and ideas that you are having are those thoughts and ideas actionable and what is the next step that you can take to move towards those goals to move towards that vision that you have or that thought that you have to turn it into a reality i believe this i believe that winners take small steps losers have big dreams that's the big difference losers only have big dreams but winners take small steps and to take that small steps your brain needs clarity of what to do and how to do it so go down to that level of answering what do i need to do next and how do i need to do it if you are able to find an answer to these two questions then you have the clarity and the moment you have the clarity of what you need to do and how you need to do it then the fear reduces and the reason to delay or defer things also reduces so the best way of overcoming procrastination or fear of failure which is the reason why people are only thought oriented and not action oriented is to get clarity of what to do and how to do and if you don't have clarity then the next step is to learn so there is someone who can teach you what to do and how to do it so if you can't answer the question of what to do and how to do it then find someone that's your next step find someone who can help you answer that question and just follow that trail my friend so it's not just about being thought oriented at the end of the day results success achievements are not given to people from from the universe based on the quality of their thoughts is given to them based on the quality of their actions so just take the next small step my friend it's not about the big step it's about the next small step if you're able to answer that question of what's my next small step and do it you're making progress and that's how you turn from thought oriented to action oriented i hope that adds value to you pawan let's go to the third question the next question is from chaitanya krishna on linkedin when we build team one spoiled resource would always be there for spoiling the entire team how to tackle that one resource it's not like there will be one always there but yeah i get your question that if you have someone on your team who's a rotten apple then the chances are that the rotten apple can rot the other apples as well so here's how you deal with it you firstly have one to one conversations with this person who you think is a problem child to understand what is it that makes them behave the way they behave and here you also have to be very very transparent and give them specific feedback of what they are doing well what they are not doing well and what they need to do differently you know sometimes as leaders we are not putting out our expectations to people and we are expecting people to understand and live up to our expectations without us expressing our expectations so my philosophy in business is very simple don't expect instead express because when you express then you're setting standards you're setting expectations for people and then you can hold them responsible to it so the first action for you to take would be to give feedback and let the person know what you expect from that person and then you watch that person if they continue to play the role of a rotten apple or a problem child then pull them up and hold them accountable okay ask them what makes them do what they are doing and what are the consequences of them doing what they are doing but if on the face they are yes to you for everything but there's a no inside their heart and they go out there and gossip about goals or gossip about the workplace or gossip about you and you see that kind of behavior then call them out on such a behavior do not mince your words be straight forward with such a person not abusive some entrepreneurs lose their cool and they get abusive when you get abusive then the objectivity of the conversation is lost anger is a sign of insecurity so don't feel that you're being macho by abusing someone at the same time just being passive and avoiding a conversation it's also is not healthy for as an entrepreneur so you got to be assertive in your communication where you're clearly exp- expressing to that person what is not acceptable what do you want from them and if they don't la- fall in line then what will be the consequence of that and in the process if they show progress acknowledge them thank them for taking the feedback and showing progress but if they don't show progress and they continue to repeat the cycle of being very negative resistant uh, spreading negativity in the workplace gossiping blame game playing all the politics games then 
the only option you will have is to let that person go because you've put in the effort from your side to bring them in line but if there is a genuine character flaw there where this person is just driven and addicted to negativity then please avoid such toxic energy in your workplace and let the person go and make sure that it's a story you tell everybody in your organization so they clearly know what to be and what not to be great organizations are built on stories so when you take decisions like these of letting people go make sure that you set a precedent up for everybody to know what is the values of the company and what is not the values what is acceptable and what is not acceptable when you do that you will see people fall in line so i would say reach out extend the support coach give feedback hold them accountable if all of this fails then say goodbye to the person without any guilt for yourself so that's how i would tackle such a situation my friend but do not live with a person who you cannot trust that's the ground rule i said it in one of the previous episodes of get real with rajiv i will say this forever to every entrepreneur never have a person on your team that you cannot trust it's not worth it no matter what results they bring it's not worth it so let them go so that would be my response my friend let's go to the question number 4 now uh, the last question is from mohammad ali on linkedin when can i do multiple businesses well mohammad ali the first question you need to answer is why do you want to do multiple businesses let me tell you when do i hear entrepreneurs wanting to do multiple businesses Firstly I've heard some entrepreneurs say I want to do multiple businesses because the business that they currently have is not fulfilling their goals and aspirations so in fact all of you will relate to this how many of you met people who give you a business card and they say I'm a trainer I'm a coach I'm a real estate agent I'm a life insurance person I'm doing this I'm doing that that's not called a serial entrepreneur that's called serially broke and serially desperate because I'm so desperate nothing's working out I'm trying to do everything to make everything work out now this i think is a huge trap a lot of entrepreneurs fall into so if you want to do multiple businesses because you're not making money from your existing businesses bad idea focus on the existing business focus on the system focus on the strategy focus on the skills in the existing business improvise on all of those and make sure that the existing business starts becoming profitable and scalable now that would be situation number 1 where the desire for multiple businesses comes because the existing business is not giving you the desired result now there's another situation where people ask me when can i do multiple businesses and the other situation is that the existing business is stable there's nothing exciting happening in the existing business nor is it very very adventurous it's kind of stabilized itself and it it's a little mundane and boring now the entrepreneur is making good amount of money from it but the entrepreneur is missing that that sense of excitement and adventure in their life therefore they want to venture into something new well if that's you then go ahead and explore something but when you explore something do not take the resources from one business and risk it into setting up another business that would be a huge mistake if you are investing in another business make sure you are investing it out of your own personal income from the first business so there is a difference between taking money from one business and putting into another business versus taking money from the existing business as your own salary and your profit and then utilizing a part of that in investing in another business so you are personally putting yourself on the line in the second business do that if you want to but at the same time do it with the right team and do it like a full time business sometimes people just like playing with ideas so they start another company and all they are doing is playing with ideas and losing money in the process so make sure that you are profit conscious even in the second business and build something that is profitable and scalable there at the same time a good question to answer would be why not scale the first business what can you do to pivot your business model to make this more profitable and scalable either scale it uh, by adding new products and services or scale it across geographies or scale it enough to take it to an ipo or scale it enough to acquire smaller companies or merge with larger companies so play the bigger game just because you have reached stability in your first business does not mean that's the life of that business no there's more to every business but if you feel you want creatively you want to engage yourself in something else then start the next business but start from the ground knowing that you got to invest the same amount of enthusiasm and energy that you invested in your first business and it carries a risk so you make sure that you do it diligently so that's how you do your second business and while you move to the second business your first business should be automated which means you need to have strong systems you need to have a second line team of leaders who are there to grow the business even when you are not 100% focused on that business only then you have a clearance or the license to build a second business so that's how i would approach this mohammed i hope that 
answers your question of when can you start multiple businesses for me the first thing would be to challenge why multiple businesses because if the reason is just to make more money not exciting fix the first business then and if the reason is creative exploration or some desire or some passion project that you have in mind that you want to turn it into a reality pursue it but don't de don't risk things in the first business sometimes people to to create something new they disrupt what is already there which is stable don't make that mistake my friend what is stable is a blessing make sure you safeguard it protect it take care of it and then you go out there and play for the second or the third venture i hope that approach suits you mohammad with that we are done with episode number 21 of get real with rajiv and now is the time for us to pick a winner from this week so let me ask avinash who does he think deserves to be the winner of the copy of my book lead or bleed so avinash which question uh, you need to indicate it you never say it okay uh let me see avinash has given me a number but i may not agree to the number i think i love the question of chirag what a chirag question what a chirag question was I wanted to ask about what modus operandi has. Yeah, the ethics and economics piece. I love that question, Chirag. So, Chirag, you are the winner of Get Real with Rajiv, episode number twenty-one. My team is going to reach out to you, and you're going to get a copy of my book, Lead or Bleed. Enjoy the read. And for those of you watching, ask more questions in the comment below and share these Get Real episodes with your friends so more entrepreneurs can benefit from this Q and A format. With that, this is Rajiv Dalreja signing off, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.